Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to the uh, Quill18 Saturday livestream. Looking at all the beautiful, wonderful people on chat over there. And uh, we had a couple of technical problems with what our plans were, so we're going to jump right into uh, right into Democracy 3 instead. We'll throw up some straw polls, and we'll have some sort of interaction there, and then we'll figure out where we want to go from there. So yeah, Democracy 3 is a game about running a country. And what's interesting about it is not, it's not very graphical, it's... I don't know, you'll see what happens when we get into it. Anyway, it's 50% off this weekend, and they just came out with an expansion pack called Social Engineering that adds a bunch of new decisions and events and all that, so I'm really looking forward to it. So we were going to play EU4 as Austria, and apparently I can't do that, so instead I'm going to play Democracy 3 as Australia. That's the same thing, right? I think so. So, um, Australia, population, roughly 22 million, quite big, life expectancy, very, very good. Uh, the uh, inequality... Uh, ratio is 30.5. If we compare it to another country, like I said, we compare it to France, inequality is actually slightly higher. Even higher in the UK, and much higher in the US. What about Canada? Slightly higher. Well, so Australia actually apparently at the start of this is a very low uh, inequality. So the, the poor are not super poor, the rich are not necessarily super rich. GDP is also quite high, quite a bit higher than Canada. Wow. Poverty is a little higher, though. Hmm, look at that. And 21.7% obesity rate. So yeah, we're going to jump in as, uh, as Australia. Australia, of course, famous for running the Holy Roman Empire for quite a long time. Part of the uh, very, very important Habsburg dynasty, uh, which I think are kangaroo people. Something like that. So uh, who are we going to run as? There's lots of... Th all the parties are exactly the same. They just have different names, which I think is a political statement in and of itself. Um, we are going to play, what, if, last time we played as, like, secret conservatives that didn't really work out. Should we go hyper-socialist? I mean, in this game, it's much easier to go hyper-socialist. We could try the super conservative thing again, since it didn't work out for us last time, because I was too aggressively conservative too fast. Um, but I'm thinking about going super highly communist, socialist, something. Like, it, it, it always, you know, you start off with maybe, like, just, just good um, egalitarian sort of socialist ideas, and then it quickly devolves into some sort of crazy communist police state uh, in this game. At least that's the way it happens when I play it. Mm-hmm. Um, check to see if the mod is active. That's a good point. I'm pretty sure it's in the list, and it is active. And also, there's tons of mods available for this game. It's integrated with the Steam Workshop. There's lots of extra nations you can download. Uh, I know the the Netherlands one is highly regarded. I'm going to play mostly just vanilla, because that's what I do. All right, Australia. See what people want to play. Yeah, a lot of people are looking for communists, so we're going to do that. Um, the People's Party, right? The People's Front. The People's Popular Front. People's Movement, Socialist Party, Socialist Commission, we're front, the Secular Party. I think I want to be the front. I'm going to be the popular front. And we're going to be up against um, sort of Democratic Conservatives. There we go. So we'll have the, uh, the five-year term length. We'll leave it in there. We're only going to play two terms. That's going to be our term limit. We're going to see what we can do in that amount of time. Hurricanes are enabled. Earthquakes are not. Compulsory voting is turned on which is a thing in australia that's very interesting and a monarchy is of course on we're gonna leave the settlers where they start off with just no average difficulty average innate socialism at least for this country like australia might be more or less socialist or liberal than say the usa but this means this is their normal difficulty for australia but we could fiddle around with it and they have a uh, not a, a huge they have very low political apathy i think it's because the, the voting is uh, it's compulsory we'll see all right, so let's uh, let's jump in on this and see what happens. The People's Front of Judea. That's exactly what I was thinking. <clears throat> so we're the People's Front. Congratulations on your election victory. Welcome to your new job as Prime Minister. The lives of all 22 million citizens are down in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Plus, do not forget that you face re-election in five years. So you will need to monitor the opinions of and our party membership the opinion polls in our party membership good luck so right now the gdp sucks there's quite a lot of unemployment tons of crime wow people are relatively educated there's not a huge amount of poverty although a fair amount um and health is not fantastic either so recording seems to be going okay good all right so right now we are running a deficit of 20 billion 
uh, Australian dollars, and we're also almost $300 billion in debt. That's not very good. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, the people, so these are all the different voter groups. If you've never played this game before, this is the, the main interface for it. In the middle here, we've got all the different voter groups, and, and it might be a little hard to see on Twitch. Actually, it might not be too hard at all. There's kind of a gray background behind some of these. Is my mouse showing up? Yeah gray background behind some of these and that shows how many people are in there so if we take a look at the socialist 76 percent of the population consider to be consider themselves to be socialist oh this is actually gonna be a little easier than i thought um since we're running this relatively socialistically at least to start off with um now and the people who are capitalists is only 24 percent so if we do something that pisses off capitalists but makes socialists happy it's actually going to improve our popularity overall there's also the everyone group, and there's some things that piss off everyone regardless. Like, it doesn't matter what your group you're in, you hate crime, and violent crime, and street gangs. Holy crap, Australia! What's wrong with you? Plus, you don't you have, like, really harsh gun laws, too? License required. Is, aren't handguns, like, banned in Australia? Am I, am I remembering that wrong? Shoot, I don't know. Um, hmm. Oh, what is this? Drugs. Um, yeah, so there's going to be some things that are different. Oh, tasers. I don't believe that was in the base game. Or maybe it was just a policy I never enacted. But yeah, there's going to be some new stuff, so it's going to be really interesting. So the big things we want to look out for, anything that's red, those are like major problems that have been triggered. And you can see here, there's a... The blue line is where we are. The red line is if ever we go... Normally, you don't see asthma epidemic. It's like a hidden thing, okay? But internally, it's still tracked. And if ever this blue line goes above the red line, that's when this kicks in. And then it has huge detrimental effects on parents. Parents hate that because it affects their kids. And it also brings down productivity a little bit. We have to bring the asthma rate all the way below the green line to cause this to go away. So once something kicks in, it's very, very hard to get rid of. Um, a big part of the problem is that the environment sucks and there's a lot of people using cars. So we may not actually be able to get rid of the uh, asthma epidemic, frankly. The parents might be permanently pissed off at us, unfortunately. Um, what else can we do? Now, we are having a deficit. We could raise taxes to try to offset that. And certainly the socialists would not be unhappy if we raised corporate tax or income tax or capital gains tax. Uh, the problem is if you raise taxes too much, then you one of the problems that can pop up is tax avoidance, which actually like hurts you more because you actually have to cut taxes dramatically to get the tax avoidance to go away. And then you can sort of raise it up a little bit after that. So um, what else we've got? We've got pollution which is a, certainly a problem, um, and it's because our environment is not fantastic. Like, the environment, our current environment is contributing a lot to pollution. If we actually click on there, our environment is not great. It's being pulled down by car usage, air travel, GDP, the more sorry, you produce in general. So that's gross domestic product, basically how much money your whole country makes. The more you make, the more the environment kind of suffers. We do have some pollution controls in play, so that's good. Um, also, bad environment increases the cost of our uh, state health care. What do we do? Are we teaching? We're teaching both creationism and evolution. We might do something about that rather quickly. Uh, it costs us nothing either way. It's just a policy. But by swinging it all the way over to evolution only, we kill. Well, first of all, religious people hate us, but we also dramatically lower the inclusion in religious groups. Uh, meanwhile, liberals like us and liberalism like us. Plus, um, this used to have an impact on various technology things, um, but we. It doesn't look like we're backwards technologically, so that's less of a problem. We do have an uncompetitive economy, and it's mostly because our productivity sucks. What can we do to raise our productivity? Make people healthier, cut back on booze, we could raise wages, or increase technology would be very good. I really like that. We've got stem cell research going on in technology uh, colleges. We don't have much in the way of science funding which we could bring up. Again, we're in a deficit, but we're socialists, right? So deficit spending is what we like to do, although we also like to raise taxes. Wow, there's a lot of stuff, and it's, it's a big question of where do we start tackling it? We've got a lot of homelessness. Holy crap, do we ever? Which increases crime. Vigilante mobs. <laughs> oh my god. Um, this is really not good. We gotta bring our crime down. Why is there so much crime in Australia? What's wrong with you people? I say as all the Australians are currently asleep. I should have done this live stream at like 6 p.m. or something like that. What the hell? We've got poor quality. We've got organized crime. Lots of alcohol abuse. Listen. 
Listen, alcohol. I don't know. And we can enact new ideas. We can also move the sliders around. Should we throw a new tax in there? Junk food tax. That's what I'm going to do. The voters hate it. Uh, and it doesn't raise tons of money, but it will cut back on obesity dramatically. Recreational drug tax. That was our strategy last time. Get people addicted to drugs and then tax them. I think we might do a junk food tax because health is certainly a problem. Um, do we have obesity listed anywhere? No. Seriously, what do we do about the alcohol abuse? Alcohol tax. Now, this will hurt the poor and increase poverty. But wow, we can raise a lot of money doing this. I think we're going to have a, like a 50% alcohol tax. I think I like that idea. We do need to boost the tech because that increases our GDP, which gives us a lot more money to implement things. We have a big poverty problem already, which we will tackle as socialists. Tech colleges, what else? Is there something we can enact, actually? That's what we'll do. We'll start with something that we can enact to increase our technology. Alcohol awareness campaign might be a really good idea, actually. Stop drinking so much, you goddamn Australians. What's wrong with you? Technology grants. Ooh, robotic research grants, cool. A lot of these are new. Oh, cool. All right, we're going to do tech grants. Start with that. Set it at medium. Again, less religious people. Again, as you know, you sort of like spam sort of high-tech ideas at people and sort of secularism. The, the religious membership does drop. And one day we'll have to do like a big theocracy. But today is not that day. We'll turn Canada into a giant uh, theocracy. So, yeah, I'm going to do this. Lowers unemployment, increases technology a lot, increases our GDP a little bit, hopefully enough to offset the cost. It is expensive, but I think it'll be worthwhile. It makes capitalists happy, which I don't necessarily care about that much because there's not that many of them. But we're going to do that. We've got 15 more uh, political capital left. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to go and put in the alcohol awareness campaign. It doesn't cost very much, and we'll have just enough political capital to introduce it. And um, listen, let's, let's max it out. It's not that expensive, and it dramatically lowers alcohol consumption. It does take a while for it to kick in. It'll take um, uh, like three years to kick in fully. I think every turn is four months. I don't remember now. But yeah, we're going to put TV ads that said, tell Australians to stop drinking so goddamn much. We'll see how much of an effect that does. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, oh it, was it was only two political capital to enact, so we've got a lot left. Now, you tend to want to make changes, you know, slowly and delicately. What else could we bump? Drugs are completely outlawed. Which actually, I believe, increases... Um, it increases organized crime, right? I don't see narcotics in the list. That's weird. <clears throat> It could also increase our um, our intelligence services and like make some sort of fascist police state. There, we'll increase wiretapping. Oh, we don't have enough. Never mind. CCTV cameras. Very expensive to enact. It actually increases street gangs. No, it makes conservatives happy. Sorry, I misread that. Increase. It lowers antisocial behavior. It's expensive-ish. On every street corner, there. Very Orwellian society, that's what we're going to build. We're probably going to go bankrupt. I'm probably doing this a little too much. But let's go ahead and hit next and see what happens. Oh, a stop and search question. Um, yeah, so there are demands for the police, from the police for, for the power. Hello, Westo. Thank you for subscribing. For the power to stop and search people on the street if they believe the individual may be guilty of crime. Currently, our police cannot search someone without formally arresting them. So, uh, yeah, we're going to create our um, highly communist police state. So, yeah, of course we're going to enable stop and search. This will be a valuable weapon in the fight against crime and should have noticeable impact on violent and street crime especially. If our citizens have nothing to hide, they have nothing to fear from this law. See? Nothing to worry about. Everything is fine. You can trust me. 
Uh, the traditional values alliance is apparently being quite uh, aggro against me. I suspect that they're, what, a conservative group? The conservatives, I don't think, like me terribly much. Wow, the liberals hate me. The, both the liberals and the conservatives hate me. I'm so good at this. Now, the conservatives are going to start liking me more. There's a lot of conservatives here. So they're, they're socialist conservatives, and that's one of the things to remember. Um, the terms here are being used sort of accurately based on what they actually define. If you're an American, a lot of these terms won't sort of make sense. How can you be conservative and socialist? Um, but socialist is sort of opposed by capitalists here. So socialists want income equality, and capitalists want a lot of ability to sort of, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and make yourself... Um, you know, rich, right? That's the difference there. Whereas liberal people, they want liberty and freedom, you know, not be monitored. And like, they want, you know, free drugs and free booze, kind of like that kind of openness. Whereas conservatives are opposed to that um, in, in a lot of ways. Like right now we have legalized prostitution, which makes these people really unhappy. Um, now having legalized prostitution, yeah, the, the, the more legal prostitution is, it actually hurts, it brings down organized crime uh, because they can't use prostitution as a way to make money. It does piss off the religious people a lot and parents and conservatives tons. It does increase GDP slightly as you, I don't know, tax prostitution, I suppose. And it makes liberals pretty happy as well. Um, I don't know if we're gonna mess with this right now, but it, it is something interesting to consider. What did we do to our GDP here? GDP actually dropped ever so slightly. Uh, we could get rid of the carbon tax. Stem cell research is not very costly and does really good things. Pisses off the religious like crazy. We really could max this out. It used up a lot of um, political capital, which is what you use to like push through laws. But it doesn't really cost us much, and it does boost GDP slightly more, and the technology slightly more, improves health a little bit, pisses off religious people and conservatives. Let's, let's hope we don't get cancelled. I think I'm going to do this because I'm leery about putting anything else that costs money. So I'm going to do that. The other thing I could save is um, the, uh, the teach the controversy thing, evolution versus creationism, and go full evolution. I think it improves technology, but I'm not sure. I'm going to do this. And uses up most of my political capital, but um, it's probably generally worthwhile here just to improve GDP. Really need more income. Deficit is 23 million. Not quite as bad considering what I did to change our spending. I think I added like four or five billion dollars more spending. So it's actually not quite as bad as it could have been. All right, now how are we doing? Debt protection law. Debt collection agencies have been in the use because of the aggressive methods they're using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate. So here's actually a pretty good question. If we are truly going the sort of like um, mega communist socialist crackdown big brother kind of thing, well, take out the big brother part of this. Um, and certainly a debt protection law seems like a way to hurt the capitalist pig dogs that are trying to take advantage of everyone else. So I think what we might do is actually limit the agency activity, which should help the poor a little bit. Yeah, so I think we're going to be relatively socialistic here. And again, sometimes I'll be like, the socialistic is in, yes, we're helping everyone and being egalitarian. And sometimes we're going to be communist and like reign in control. So it's going to be very, it's going to be conservative socialist is what we're doing, which is really what the, the communist thing is. It's super conservative, super socialist. So, but here I will limit agency activity. Take the, the socialist side. Budget deficit did go up a little bit. Crime is going down, which is good because it's still like freaking post-apocalyptic here. That, like, I've never seen crime that high. At least not until I took care of it, took control of a country and had horrible things happen. So we got our stop and search is kicked in, which is going to help bring down crime. What is antisocial behavior? Vandalism, public nuisance, petty street crime, the results of antisocial, loudish behavior and has become commonplace in our streets, often linked with consumption of alcohol and not helped by insufficient levels of police on the streets. Yeah, so it is being brought down by CCTV cameras and police force, brought up by um, alcohol consumption, which hopefully in and of itself is dropping just barely just barely um it is also increased by religious membership which is interesting police forces are medium could we i don't know i don't know if we can afford bringing that up uh what we might just do is give them more powers um right like we don't have much in the way of an armed police we could increase the um the use of guns in Australian police. It doesn't cost that much more. Like, we can go from here 
to here by adding one billion dollars, which I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a decent amount, but it's not apocalyptic, and it will dramatically bring down street crime, violent crime, crime overall. Liberals hate it, but also organized crime. So I think that's definitely a possibility. Let's take a look at what other law and order decisions we can make. Community policing. You know, it's not unpopular with voters. It's not super popular. Like some of these, like gated communities, they love this. It costs just nothing. Um, popular with the wealthy, but yeah, they're associated with class divide. Um, I'm not sure what the negative uh, effects of a gated community are. Internet censorship doesn't really help. Prisoner tagging. Racial profiling might help, but not necessarily good. Race Discrimination Act prevents people from being... We'll pass both racial profiling and the Race Discrimination Act, so they'll cancel each other out. Private prisons, which you can use to sort of make money on. Well, it costs us some money, I guess. But um, ideally less than state-run prisons. Police drones. National Armed Forces Week. Celebrating the service of the country, make them feel appreciated. Doesn't cost that much. What's the effect? Does it just buff police services? Witness protection program. We could implement gated communities. I, I still like the idea of giving police more guns. Yeah, gated communities, come on bro, we be commies. You're right, gated communities don't fit in. But armed police. Every p officer armed. <laughs> With submachine guns, no. We'll just, we'll just bring it over to every officer is now armed. Implementation delay is three turns, which isn't that bad, so we should start to see a benefit to this pretty damn quick. Again, costs are going up. Can we do something to improve um, our income a little bit? We could raise the alcohol tax some. Again, it hurts the poor. For commies, I mean, we're going to want vodka around, right? So should we increase corporate tax? Again, this can have a, a detrimental effect on our GDP. And also our uncompetitive economy. Let's take a look at that. It sucks. We really need to get rid of the uncompetitive economy. Um, hopefully by raising productivity. Productivity has gone up. Alcohol consumption is not really dropping. The alcohol awareness campaign is still being deployed. It's taking a long time to kick in. We changed the alcohol law to be just 21+. plus. Liberals and youth don't like it. Slightly drops violent crime, but also drops um, alcohol consumption pretty dramatically. How do we raise money? What do people want to do? Yeah, don't raise corporate tax yet. It could kill your con. It might be a little too early for that. Um, increase carbon taxes? Maybe. I mean, we have some. And that's, like, rare. Most countries don't have it at all, but Australia did pass that. A little bit of a petrol tax? Actually, that's not a bad idea. It has... At, at high end, it does have an effect on GDP, but right up until here, it hardly has any GDP effect at all. Improves our environment, or it makes environmentalists happy. It doesn't directly improve our environment, but it lowers car usage pretty dramatically, which would pretty be pretty helpful in improving our environment and helping the asthma problem. <clears throat> wow, that would be a lot of money. Okay, we don't have enough political capital for this, but we might do it via a petrol tax. I mean, private car ownership, that's pretty bourgeois anyway. We want to encourage people to use, like, public mass transportation, obviously, right? For many reasons. I like that. We can compensate with the petrol tax by increasing our bus and rail subsidies. I think I like that. So we might not do anything this turn. Our debts are going up, and actually, one of our problems in our expenses... Um, oh, it's not too bad. Where's our interest rate? Debt interest is actually really low. So our debt has not gotten critical yet. That's good. We could cut services somewhere, but I don't think that makes sense given what we're doing. I think I'm going to skip the turn, and next turn, increase the petrol tax. I like it. Okay, we're gonna hit next. See what happens. <clears throat> Superhero. 
New stations have been buzzing with reports of a caped man. He's been seen fighting crime in our cities. Already, a number of high-profile arrests have been unofficially attributed to the Max Stranger. Hey, Supreme Migu, thank you for joining the party. Have some nachos. Uh, already, yeah, a sign of how bad things have become in our streets that our citizens are turning to superheroes for help. Well, that's good. It's lowering crime and violent crime. And crime is dropping overall. <clears throat> Global economy is in recession, which is not going to help us at all. If there was a vote today, we'd only get 2% of the vote. That's not good. The Communist Party is actively urging its members to take nonviolent action against government policy. What? But I'm working with you. Well, the membership is going down. Which is interesting. So less people are maybe being cranky about it. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. So let's take a quick gander at things. GDP has indeed dropped. But I think a lot of it has to do with, yeah, the global economy really, really hurting us. Um, uncompetitive economy is dropping a little bit, which is good. Productivity is going up, which is great. Alcohol consumption is slightly on its way down. All right, we're going to go with the petrol tax. We're going to use it to help offset a good part of our deficit. Now, how, how high do I want to go? Again, I don't want to hurt the GDP. I think we're going to call it a 40% petrol tax. It's a huge amount of money. <clears throat> I bet you it's going to have, like, some horrible event is going to trigger as a result of this. Yeah, go kangaroo, man. I like that. Um, boom. That uses up almost all my political capital. Uh, can we increase... Oh, do we not have bus subsidies in here? could actually have an actual car tax as well. Keep the country tidy campaign. Nice. Well, you think it'd be on a transport, right? It must be on the transport. Oh, there it is. Okay. I, did I? Maybe I just didn't click on the right tab. I need. Uh, okay, ten political capital or nine. Oh, I have nine. I need ten. Okay. Let's hit next and see what happens. Okay, global economy is still in recession, which is bad. Crime hasn't really moved. Freedom of Information Act. No, we're gonna we're gonna reject that. Sorry, government's gotta you know keep keep things a little sort of closer to the hip. What's the term? I don't remember. Keep your hand close to your vest, right? So we're gonna have uh, bus, bus subsidies is what we're gonna kick in here. Relatively popular with voters, or at least not unpopular. It's a little bit expensive, but you know. Hopefully we'll get some good results. I mean, really, our job here is to funnel money from the gas tax into bus subsidies to the point where I could really, really bring this up quite a bit. Increases bus usage a lot, improves uh, poor earnings a lot. Commuter income goes up and commuter membership goes up as well. I think we're going to bring it to sort of high and apply changes. Deficit, like, so much better than it used to be. Um, so the motorists are going to start to hate us. Uh, we could also implement bus lanes, which I think sounds like a pretty good idea. Uh, not terribly expensive, which is good. Does piss off motorists, but again, increases bus usage and uh, makes commuters happy. Yeah, we'll bring it into the high category as well. It is free to tweak this bar when you introduce the thing. So may as well take the opportunity to do it now. And yeah, so car usage, is this this? Yes, you should see it drop pretty dramatically once the petrol tax kicks in more and more and more. Uh, we could cut back on road building. Which, actually, right now, road building is decreasing traffic congestion, so that would make things worse. Uh, there. Oh, we don't have the political capital for it anyway. We don't have much political capital at all. Um, and then, yeah, then there's the rail usage at all. So, actually, bus usage is bringing down rail usage. But we could also introduce some rail subsidies. Uh, we may actually have enough to do that. No. Oh, a cycling campaign. Seems like a good idea. Carpooling. Bicycle subsidies. Hmm. And telecommunication, telecommuting initiatives. Seems like a pretty strong idea as well. Encourage people to work from home. Yeah, rail subsidies. Yeah, we'll take a look at that soon enough. <clears throat> All right, what is this? Street gangs, almost completely gone. They'll probably be away, gone next turn, which is great. 
Ghettos, still relatively high, but once street gangs go away, there's not going to be as much upward pressure on ghettos. Um, vigilante mobs are also dropping pretty pretty quickly. Crime is on its way down and hopefully will continue to, to drop a little bit further. Antisocial behavior, hmm. I don't know what we can do to make this, like, improve even more. I mean, other than fund the police force some more. Which we could do. Do we want to fund police forces more? I think we might. I think we have to. Unless there's another law and order thing we can impose that will help bring down... <laughs> Just start imposing curfews. Uh, limiting the ability of peaceful citizens to leave their homes at night can be a sign of a country's degeneration into severe authoritarianism. What do you mean degeneration? That sounds like an upgrade to me. ID cards. Oh yeah, we'll be back. We're going to check that stuff out once we get a little bit more political capital. Uh, GDP. Going slightly uptick, which is good. Pro Oops, that's immigration. I wanted uh, productivity. I don't know what the symbol for productivity is. Back to GDP. Ah, it's this. One goes into three. Productivity is going up. Good. Health? Mm, upticking slightly. <clears throat> Pollution? Down ticking slightly. Environment? Up a little bit. But car usage is going to drop, so it should improve. Okay, I think we're going to hit the next turn. We've dramatically cut back on our deficit. We're still losing. We're still gaining debt overall. <clears throat> but we're very close to a balanced budget, despite the fact that our GDP is dropping. Street gang problem, gone completely. Our credit rating was downgraded. That's not good, because that does hurt our GDP. Crime is dropping dramatically, though. Very, very nice. Okay, everyone's still non-violent. Our, our support of the polls has gone from 2% to 6%, so that's something. Um, apparently, our cabinet is not particularly loyal. Let's take a look over here. Some aren't bad, but some are really terrible. You know what? I'm actually going to go ahead. Rather than fire individuals... Actually, apparently I can fire this one, which is one capital. Because um, one, two, three of them are acceptable. But yeah, the rest are not bad. We're going to do a full cabinet reshuffle. We're going to grab the best person in every possible category. <clears throat> so ideally, the person who gives us the most um, political capital. But something else to consider is where their sympathies lie. So if their sympathies lie with a problematic group, the problematic groups like of us will go up. On the other hand... These people might not like us very much for very long. Their loyalty might drop um, just because they don't agree with what we're doing. So here, uh, who was the example? Over here, Samantha Bennett is a liberal environmentalist. So those two groups would like us more. Liberals don't like us much right now, which means this will help us with that. But also, she will start to like us less because she is liberal. But she's also environmentalist. I think it's actually a pretty good balance there. And she desires the job of foreign policy, which is what we're hiring for right now, you know, as opposed to this dude here who doesn't actually want that job that much. So we're going to go ahead and hire her there. We'll keep going down the list to so the welfare minister. So again, looking for nice high numbers. We've got 4.4 over here, although don't want to be in the welfare position. It's 4.8 is certainly very good. 4.3 and wants to be in welfare, 4.4 and wants to be there. Farmers and religious. It's going to be a little bit challenging. State employees are already going to love me, and environmentalists. You know what? We're going to take James Wright and bring him on board. Economy, or Minister for Industry. Wait, what is it? It says both. Economy, Minister for Industry, I guess it's all the same. 4.3, <clears throat> 4 4.4, a lot of people want to do the economy thing. 4.8. Conservatives and trade unions. Well, trade unions should like me because I should be taking some pro-worker policies. And he'll help offset the... Uh... Yeah, we got a chancellor for tax. I might take James John Brown over here. Oh. 4.3 conservatives, environmentalists. Environmentalists and state employees. Oh, she's got more experience. 
Alright, we'll take her. Public services. One day I'll... T you know what, John? I keep passing you over just barely. Let's go ahead and take you. I feel bad. Law and order. See, he's pretty good, but he doesn't want the job. I think we might have to settle with one of the 3.9s. Capitalists. <whistles> Liberals and parents. Two very problematic group. Hey, Gigonstein, thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing, really appreciate it. Um, we'll go with Travis Rogers over here. And tr Minister for Transport. What's our balance here? 4.4 4 for Jamie Davis. It's pretty good. Wants to be in transport. Patriots, patriots and capitalists. It's going to be a hard group of people to do, but... Alright. So now we should get, be getting a lot more political capital per turn. Although we did expend 10 this turn to do that. What are we going to do with our 22 this turn? Car usage should be dropping. Alcohol abuse. Still through the roof. Consumption is dropping, but not much. It's actual just, like, abuse, man. Which is mostly, I mean, it's mostly tied to alcohol consumption. How do you get Aussies to stop drinking so goddamn much? I don't know. I think we gotta flip this to 21. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Because right now it's adding a lot to consumption. If I did this, it would actually be removing consumption pretty dramatically. I think that's what we're doing. <laughs> Low strength beer only. We'll go to 21. Deal with it. We could tax it, but it's a tax that disproportionately affects the poor. and doesn't seem like the sort of thing we should be doing as the communist thing. Hmm. Alright, let's go. We're behind schedule here. <clears throat> Unemployment is going up? What? our GDP sucks. That is not a good place to be. One of our people won a Nobel Prize? Nobel Prize for chemistry. Improves our GDP. Patriots are happy. Liberals are happy. More people become patriots. Global economy is still in recession. Which is the blue line here. Yeah, like quite low. Our relative GDP is growing. So compared to the world, we are improving things, but it's still dragging us down ridiculously lots. Damn. No, what else was the news? Polls, people are not happy. Human Rights Society membership is growing. I think that's liberal membership. Although liberals are getting slightly happier with me. Not much, but slightly. How's the asthma? Still bad. Um, overall health? No, that's not what I'm looking for. Overall health is not really moving much. Alcohol abuse is still ridiculous. Alcohol consumption. It actually went up. I made the laws worse. Antisocial behavior went up. Vigilante mobs was almost gone and then upticked again. Why? Because the crime upticked. Alright, we're going to increase our police forces. It's time. Maximum. Only question is, can we afford it? We'll get rid of the antisocial behavior and violent crimes. I think we're gonna just move it to high. Lots of political capital, not much money. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this. Evolution only is being taught. Makes the liberals very happy. The religious people already hate me. I'll pro they'll probably try to assassinate me. On the other hand, we'll get fewer religious people over time. How many religious people do we have? That's actually a big, important question. Not very many. Okay, thank God. So the uh, membership is not very high, so there won't be that many people looking to assassinate me. 
And that's it for our turn. I missed um, someone subscribing. Sir Linder, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Religious plot. Our security services have been watching the group of religious extremists known as Crusader Lords for some time, and recent statements by their leader has given us cause for concern. The organization has become more militant, often advocating violence and direct attacks against enemies of God, and specifically your government. We believe this represents a material threat to our security, and we should keep a close watch on them. Great. Yeah. Oh, the Battenberg Group, the Moral Crusade, and the Crusaders of the Lord. So these are all radical groups that will do violence. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, that's not good. It's because liberals are really pissed. The religious people are really pissed. The Battenberg group, I think they're conservatives. who are not terribly happy. Although they're improving. I think we're going to get assassinated, you guys. I think we're going a little too extreme. I should probably, like, cut back a little bit on some of the bad policies. Our deficit has grown. That's not good. <clears throat> that's really ungood. I suspect a lot of it has to do with losing funds from our petrol tax. Well, it's still making $23 billion a quarter. Well, our income dropped and our expenses went up. I guess that's a big thing. And our debt is growing, which is increasing our interest. Actually, if we look at our expenses, our debt interest has grown a little bit. Not terribly much, but it's certainly there. Come back on state pensions or health services? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't seem appropriate. Alcohol abuse is costing us a lot of money. We could cut back on the road building at this point. It's entirely possible. I think we'll do that to save some money. We don't need as many roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Is there anything else I want to tweak? God, those religious people are pissed. <gasps> I'm so gonna die. Um, how's productivity? It's going up. That's good. That's really good. Alcohol consumption did finally drop. Oh, there's a decision. Euthanasia. Do we enable it or not? That's a good question, you guys. Let's do a straw poll. <laughs> Euthanasia. Yes. No. Boom. And here's the link. And boom. Vote. Are we going to allow euthanasia or not? Very overwhelmingly, yes. Absolutely, people are in favor of it, and I don't blame them. Legalize it. All right, next. There might be a cheap idea we can implement here. <clears throat> we don't really have a drug abuse problem. I don't know if we need the needle exchange thing. Free eye tests. Organ donation. Actually, I'm going to implement this. It's not very expensive. And it's a good idea, and it probably improves health. Pisses off religious people even more. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go presumed uh, consent. Unless you say otherwise, we're harvesting your organs. They belong to the state anyway. Oh, I'm so getting assassinated. Okay, I'm out of political capital, so let's go to next screen. Another religious plot. Yep. Corporate manslaughter bill. Uh, allow corporate entity to be prosecuted for manslaughter when they have been found guilty of negligence resulting in loss of life. Well, of course! That sounds exactly like the sort of thing we'd do. Alright, the uh, extremist membership hasn't really gone up that much, and frankly, the non-extremist one is mostly going down. Um, we're mostly, mostly we're getting people happier, which is good. Deficit is still not great. Our GDP is increasing. I mean, really, we need the world to stop sucking so much. Still have uncompetitive economy, although it's going down. Our productivity is going up. Alcohol consumption is going down. Um, alcohol abuse, still ridiculously high. Antisocial behavior is dropping. Hopefully we can get it to go away. Hopefully we can get rid of those vigilante mobs at the same time. Goddamn alcohol abuse. And organized crime is still definitely a problem. 
homelessness also bad, which increases crime and pisses off a whole lot of people. It'd be nice if we could get rid of this, but we can't afford to add more state housing. Really, we just need to eliminate more poverty, um, which could be done by improving state housing, pension, school, and of course housing will double dip, but it removes poverty and reduces un um, homelessness at the same time. It's the economy, stupid. We gotta get that going. Okay, any other cheap ideas we can implement that sound pretty good? Import tariffs, no. Tourism, no. Diplomatic service? Costs a little bit of money. Mm. Welfare fraud is, like, hardly even an issue. Rent controls. Popular with voter reduces poverty and homelessness. It's cheap for us, um, but it does hurt capitalists. Still, I think that sounds appropriate. Absolutely what we're going to do. Really pisses off capitalists and reduces their income. But improves poor earnings, makes socialists happy, reduces poverty. We'll leave it at medium. That's fine. Maternity leave is actually a really good idea, but it lowers productivity and we can't afford that right now. So we're just going to have to deal without it. Sorry, everyone. Workplace safety laws, uh, I would like, but I don't think we're going to implement it right now. Labor Day is a bank holiday. Very popular with people. Does hurt the economy a little bit. Luxury good taxes sounds like an excellent idea. And a mansion tax. I mean, you know we're going to do a mansion tax. Wow, the retired people hate this. Here, we'll bring it up there. How many wealthy people do we have? Ah, wealthy. And it's not as much as we do have socialists, so generally speaking, it should be okay. How much is it going to raise for us? Six billion dollars a quarter. That sounds pretty good to me. All right, we're out of political capital. <laughs> They're still going to try to execute me. Oh, and the Battenberg group membership has gone up as well. Oops, what's the rest of the news? Celebrity endorsement. Hooray! Some celebrity endorsed me and makes everyone like me a little bit more. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, political cabinet is fine. We're we doing okay there. Deficit is considerably lower, thanks to our new tax. GDP is increasing. Despite the fact that the world continues to suck, uncompetitive economy is dropping. Probably not close enough to completely go away, but productivity is continuing to tick up. Makes me happy. Alcohol consumption dropping dramatically. Are we on the verge of getting rid of some of this crap? Well, alcohol abuse is not like 100% now, thank God. Antisocial behavior, still not gone. Vigilante mob, God damn it, just go already. Holy crap. Ghettos are dropping, but not completely eliminated. Organized crime, yeah. Homelessness is still going to be pretty bad. We did implement rent control. Which will help drop the poverty some. Now we change that, yes. Abortion laws, limited circumstances. If we brought it up, like it would mostly piss off people more than anything else. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna leave it where it is. We could do more technology colleges. It's not that expensive. We still have that deficit, but it's not that expensive, and it improves education and technology hugely. I probably should have done this ages ago, because this will have a massive effect on our GDP. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply this. Actually, again, I should be looking for, whoops, not achievements, but cheap things I can implement. Car emission limits. Yeah, actually, that's probably a really good idea. Free bus passes? No. Monorail! Sympathize school buses, telecommunication, fuel efficiency standards. Actually, that's probably the smartest thing. We'll start with this. Very high. Lowers oil demand, which is probably good, actually. actually increases motorist income because their cars are more efficient. Oh, that makes sense. It actually raises car usage. 
but also makes environmentalists happy. Lowers that this is like win 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 win. Holy crap! Yeah, definitely put that into effect. Holy jeez. Um, we could even put in some car emission limits at the same time. It's not very expensive. Makes the environment dramatically improved. Oh, there we go. I mean, I'm not necessarily needing to directly make environmentalists happy. If we can improve the environment, they will become happy, and it also has good effects on health and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, there. Apply that. Watch the CO2 income or uh, output drop. I mean, it's already dropped somewhat. As long as we don't get... Oh, there's a conservative plot now. <laughs> the Moral Crusade. Oh my god. No more vigilante mobs. Boom. Oil drilling opportunity. Oil drilling? Question mark? Let's have a vote. Oil drilling? Yes. No. We're going to have a referendum. Uh, right here. Boom. Oil drilling. Ooh, close one. Uh, looks like the yeses are going to win. Yeah, about 60-40. All right, which is actually not that close at all in, in most elections. We're going to drill, 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 baby. Nobody wants to spoil the environment, but the alternative is reliance on foreign oil. We've actually dropped our requirements on oil to start off with, but um, <laughs> there's no one in my party. Party membership is, like, completely non-existent. Whereas my opposition has 14... <laughs> Out of a population of 22 million, 14 and a half million belong to the party that opposes me. I don't think we're getting reelected. I I don't think we are. But look, we're improving things. GDP is going up. It's fine. Oh, we really have to make people happy at this point. Um, especially the larger groups. Can we make the patriots happy? Lots, lots of patriots. Lots of socialists as well. We're working on them. Tech colleges they don't like, and the amount of poverty and everything they don't like. But we're working on that. Poverty is... Slightly going down. Um, environmentalists, but what, 40% of our population environmentalists? They really like me. State employees really like me, but we don't have enough. We could increase the amount if we were willing to spend money on more cops and army and stuff. Just r generically increase our, um, our... Hello, Malmortis. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, just increasing the size of the government. <clears throat> Conservatives are actually liking me slightly more. How are the liberals? They hate me. So we could cancel legalized prostitution, which actually doesn't make the liberals like me that much. And it really pisses off the conservatives. Uh, so I could cancel legalized prostitution. Also make the religious way less cranky and parents. However, it would increase organized crime. That being said, I think that we'll have to deal with organized crime in some other way. By increasing the police, like, everything. And actually, this doesn't really affect uh, organized crime that much. Okay, no more legalized prostitution. Boom. We're doing things entirely to try to get reelected now. We spent the first half of our term trying to shift the economy around and, and the way it works. Just increasing our debt the entire time. It's okay, we'll just print money or something. Religious plot. Listen, I'm trying to help. Landmine ban. Probably. I mean, we're not sort of like capitalist here. No, I think we're banning landmines. We have a minor budget deficit. Oh, our budget deficit is less than a billion. That's not bad. Our last poll puts us 25% of the vote in the election. That's actually not bad at all. We really could use a actual like party membership. But overall, the amount of people who are voting... It used to be 2%. Oh my god. So the conservatives... Well, the conservatives... Listen, you guys are going to start liking me more. So you should become de-radicalized. Please. Antisocial behavior is still something they hate. And I hate it too, but...
I think we're putting like CCTV everywhere. Going full big brother. Doesn't it cost encourage the cost that much. It only pisses off the liberals. Everything else is good. Conservatives like it more and it reduces crime, violent crime. Yeah. Boom. Face recognition on the CCTV cameras. Screw it. And tasers everywhere. Reduces crime, but does piss off liberals. We're not very happy with us, and frankly, they might become radicalized soon. Hmm. Organized crime, yeah, has gone up. <clears throat> We should just ban gambling. Because right now, gambling is helping organized crime because they run all the casinos. <clears throat> if we got rid of gambling, well, or lowered it down to basically nothing, then it would upset capitalists a little bit and also liberals, but the religious would be happier and it would crush organized crime. Hurts our GDP a fair bit, though, because we make money based on gambling. No more gambling. We don't want people to think about money that much. More religious plots. Religious condemnation. Call upon you to resign and told his followers not to vote for you. Yee. Okay. The economy, the world economy continues to suck. Although it is upticking. Okay, that's true. That That is better. But overall, we have a budget surplus of two billion. Guys, we turned the economy around. We're making money. 33% of them intend to vote for me next election. It keeps going up. We might have enough time to pull this off, assuming we don't get assassinated. Antisocial behavior should go away next time. Yes. Alcohol abuse is still a problem. Organized crime is dropping. Ghettos continue to drop. Things are getting better. We're making money. I think I've got to drop the debt a bit. I don't think I can really afford to start spending right now. Especially, things are going pretty well. I don't want to fiddle-faddle too, too much. How's our productivity? Not bad. Health? Health has gone up, which is good. Pollution is still a problem. Environment not going up as much as I'd hoped. You know what? We're going to spend money to enforce, like... Universal door-to-door -door recycling improves the environment, improves the number of people who are environmentalists, and makes environmentalists happy. Now, environments already environmentalists already like me a lot. If we can keep increasing membership, it'll actually be really, really quite positive. Please don't murder me. Antisocial behavior has come to an end. People smuggling. Uh, oh, people were smuggled in. Here's a question. If we deported them, I think patriots would be quite happy. If we allowed them to stay, they would be unhappy. And I'm courting the patriot vote. I think we're going to deport them as a political decision. It's not something I necessarily endorse on a, on a personal level. But as a political thing, I think we're going we're gonna to deport them. 39% of people would vote for me. Getting better. And because, see, the problem is, sometimes the polls will say, like, oh, 55% of the people will vote for you. You'd be like, that's great. And then it turns out they just don't show up and don't vote because they don't have that sort of, like, enthusiasm about it. Well, here they have to vote. So, that's pretty good. I don't know how to read this. People at the top are more likely to vote for me, maybe? Liberals hate me, retired, environmentals... Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> and then weighted by population. Are we really down to... Oh my god. Only 2% of our population is religious at this point. That's good for us. Although, the, whoever's left might still try to murder me. Still got a surplus, which is great. Homelessness, still a bit of a problem. Let's, um, 
Oh, wow, state housing is expensive. I really wanted to improve that, but oh, good God, that's expensive. Unemployment is feels quite high. All right, let's. There's got to be a way to improve health. Something with like healthy foods, or the junk food tax. It does hurt the poor. You know, we could put in some health food subsidies. That might be better. Instead of hurting the poor, this actually improves poor earnings. Yeah, we can max it out. Has a pretty good effect on health and improves poor earnings. Good. I like that. That fits with the sort of thing I like. Conservatives are actually liking me a lot, so hopefully their radicalized groups are less pissy. Liberals still hate me a lot. Organized crime dropping dramatically might even go away. Looks like we, we can't stop Australians from drinking. It just doesn't seem possible. So we're just going to have to suck it up and deal, I guess. Homelessness is the thing I would really like to tackle a little bit more. James Wright is displeased with the current government, which is unpopular with their core supporters of farmers and religious people. Um... Okay, well, yeah, he's res resigning. That's not bad. Safeguard oil supplies. Send the troops or do not deploy troops. Let's send the troops. Again, it'll make the uh, Patriots happy, and there's a lot of them. Crime is at, like, an all-time low. Thank you very much. Unemployment is no longer in the red zone. It's only in the yellow zone. Thank you very much. Health, I think, has gone up. Education is really high. Poverty is not too bad. Number of people in the, mor moral, the moral crusade have dropped. I think they were at 200 at some point, so they've dropped by half. I think we might just do it. We've got six turns before the next election. We need to keep increasing our popularity, doing whatever we can. Just to, like, suck up to the large groups of people. The poor is a big block. And parents as well. Parents mostly hate the asthma epidemic. Listen, I hate it too, but what the hell are we going to do about it? I'm trying to fix the environment, goddammit. We've got a $7 billion surplus. Wow. Well, if we put in a free bus passes, that would sure as hell help the poor. Reduce car usage considerably, right? Food Standards Agency? Healthy Eating Campaign. Oh, we could put that into play. We're d the environment is definitely a problem, but I'm not sure what we can do about that. Clean energy subsidies. That actually seems like the thing to do. It's expensive, but we can afford it. We can implement clean energy subsidies and max it the hell out. Pisses off capitalists, but dramatically improves the environment, energy efficiency, reduces CO2 emissions. Bam. Sorted. I'm going to go to the next turn to see what happens. Is this something I could do to like make the religious people a little bit happier without pissing everyone off? I'm, I'm not sure that there is. Compulsory foreign language courses. I'm going to throw in the healthy eating campaign. Max that out. Improve our health. It's not that expensive. Don't assassinate me. Capitalist plot! <laughs> There's a mad cow epidemic? Son of a bitch! My credit rating got upgraded. That's good. No more organized crime. No more ghettos. Best prime minister ever. I'm also, you know, totalitarian. Communist monster. 
alcohol abuse technically dropped a little bit, and it costs us a hell of a lot of money to deal with, but um, it's not going away anytime soon. Look at this. Patriots, patriots are happy. Capitalists are actually getting happier. We still have an uncompetitive economy. Yeah, it is improving. Could get rid of corporate taxes. But I don't think that's the thing to do. Really want productivity to keep going up. And we can do that by boosting wages. Which we could do by decreasing immigration. By decreasing immigration, it um, alleviates unemployment, but hurts foreign relations. What else can we do? What other approach? More education. Education is pretty goddamn good. What we need... Uh, what about technology? Technology is not... Could probably be improved with more science funding. There we go. We've got money. Dramatically boost our science funding. That's what we're going to do. Oh, right. I forgot. That guy was going to resign. I was supposed to replace him earlier. Um, and we're going to fire her. Fuck it. Reshuffle the whole cabinet. We're going to find people who agree with me. Uh, this is foreign policy. Again, we'll find someone who's good but wants foreign policy. Liberals and parents. Oh, she's really going to hate me pretty soon. Uh, farmers and liberals. Okay, well, parents at least don't completely hate me, so we'll pick her. Welfare minister. Youth and capitalist. Uh, religious and capitalist. Uh, Ethnic might no, no, they don't like me either. Or them. What do we... Environmentalists and state in employees. There, she's going to love me. Uh, so, economy. Environmentalists. Oh, someone with a decent rating. Farmers and liberals, no. There, socialists. Like it. Our chancellor, our tax chancellor. Commuters are okay with me, actually, because of all the like bus subsidies and things. Um, ultimately, we're going to have to hire some people that may not love me that much. Which kind of sucks. Well, at least, actually, if I grab a bunch of capitalist people, they'll all work together to raise my capitalist standing. Uh, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but what the hell. Let's, let's do what we can. Um, religious capitalists? Yeah, sure. She's going to hate me soon. But at least, um, at least, oh, there we go. We've got technological advantage now. That is stupendously good. Going to dramatically improve productivity and GDP both directly and indirectly. Um, look at that. Our uncompetitive economy will disappear in a second. Everyone will make a fortune. We're, we're adding more services and we're still turning a massive surplus. Okay. Homelessness. Listen, state housing, we're going to bump up. We've got a $9 billion surplus. They will basically pay for itself, just like that. Bam. Resolving a lot more of our issues. As long as we don't get assassinated. No longer uncompetitive economy. I'm awesome! Um, we're going to go with Chris Hamilton here. It's a much stronger decision. He's the one that's popular in the international stage. Pisses off patriots a little bit. Look at that. Crime is virtually non-existent. We've gone from, like, a crime hellhole to a crime utopia. Election report. We've actually got people in our party now, which is nice. Um, and, the, ooh, our popularity is not quite as good as it could be. Definitely dropped off a little bit there. And we're very close to an election. I don't think we're going to get re-elected. Everything is awesome, and I don't think we're going to get re-elected. Patriots, what can I do for you? There are a lot of you. Should we cut foreign aid? No, I don't think so. If we make, maybe if we made liberals just hate us so completely less. But I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, you know, we can actually decrease some of our police state nonsense at this point. I could probably cut the CCTV cameras. Because 
the events should be gone. Like, we had to drop below that green line, and now if we cut CCTV cameras, it might go above the green line, but as long as it doesn't go above the red, we should be okay. This should improve things pretty, pretty well. I'm just gonna drop it down to... I don't know. Shoot. Hello, Schlettinga. We're actually gonna have to put a cut in here. We've uh, gone above our time. I, was hope I, I wanna finish the term, though, uh, one way or another. There are a lot of liberals. We really do have to do something about that. Conservatives will mostly vote on me, vote for me. Yeah, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to cancel the CCTV cameras outright. And I'm hoping that's going to make enough of a difference. There's a stress epidemic. Oh, son of a bitch. Global forecast is good. The economy is going up. Our relative GDP is still ahead of the uh, overall. 38% is not great. We have a $25 billion surplus now. Can we just bribe people? Like, that, that's what we need to do at this point. We just need to bribe the liberals. Um, ban Sunday, Sunday shopping. That would uh, make the religious people happy. Consumer rights. Actually, that will make the liberals happy. Want it? Yeah. Boom. Hurts GDP. That's okay. We need to just make the liberals. It's mostly what I'm thinking about. Um, what else do they like? What else will liberals be happy about? I don't know. Arts? Social Justice Foundation. Oh, actually just increases liberalism? Wait, 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 wait. I don't want more liberalists. Or liberals. I don't want more liberals. <laughs> I just want to make them happy. In fact, if I could have fewer liberals, that would be okay. Here, we'll put, pass the Race Discrimination Act. That'll make them incredibly happy. It's not even that expensive. Bam. It reduces racial tension, makes liberals happy, makes ethnic conservative minorities happy. Um, it hurts liberals or conservatives a little bit, and it does increase liberalism, but I think it's a good idea. God damn, it's almost religion er, religion time. It's almost voting time. Um, environmentalists are actually getting crankier. Complacency. Clean energy subsidies haven't kicked in fully yet. Environment's probably getting worse as our GDP improves. Hello, Toxid Waste. Hey, Toxid Waste. Thank you for subscribing. As our GDP improves, the environment, and, or the CO2 emissions go up is a big part of the problem. Oh, we also drilled. I guess that's going to be part of it, too. Pollution, yeah, shot right up because the environment fell right off. Car emission limits and clean energy subsidies have not kicked in yet. That's part of it as well. And yeah, the GDP is a big, big thing. What are we going to do about it? Nothing. Car usage is ticking up as well. Um... Mostly with GDP. Well. What else can we spend our money on? I don't have much in the way of political capital. Bike subsidies? Free bus passes. Boom. There's a good way to sink a lot of money. Thump. Make retired people happy. Increase bus usage. Poor earnings. Increases retirement income. Does not actually offset... Well, it's possible that bus usage offsets car usage. And it does. Good. Okay. All right, let's hit next. Religious plot still there. Antisocial behavior is kicked back in. Because, oh my god, getting rid of the CCTV really had that much of an impact? Fuck. It actually lowers the people who are liberal, which is interesting. It means more people become conservative and then the conservatives hate us. Java Josh. Hello. Oh, uh, internet tracking. Um, we're going to ban tracking to make liberals happier. Even though it's not very big brotherly of me. Polls, 40%. I don't think we're getting reelected, even though we've, like, fixed everything. Well, except this kickback in. That does suck. We'll admit that. Um, well, that's interesting. If I max out liberals aren't bothered by max out police horses... Well, shoot, we'll do that. Boom. Should have done that as soon as I started turning a, a surplus again. 
Um, okay, we need to make more people happy. Monorail. Bike subsidies? There we go. Proves health. <laughs> Food agency standard? Stamp out racism week. Ugh, increases liberalism. I don't even know how much racial tension I have. Non-existent racial tension. Oh, I think I actually implemented that. Er, foreign language. There. Nope, that's not really... Whatever, it doesn't hurt that much. We're going to apply it. All right, next turn. We're not going to get reelected. <laughs> oh, no. Our country is awesome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We did it. And, you know, we started with, like, no support, even before we started going hardcore socialist communist. Wow. We got half the liberal vote. While also getting slightly more than half the conservative vote. Retirees love us, motorists hate us, capitalists hate us. But there's more socialists and they love us. So the motorists don't like us, but overall commuters, commuters do. So people who want their cars aren't happy. But other people who just have to get to work and they don't care how they get there are very happy. Wow. Decisive, uh, divisive leader. Narrow victory. Just squeaking past the point needed for re-election. You've managed to retain power, but are widely seen as a divisive leader. And there's still a religious plot. Software patents. Software patents are, are stupid. No. Wow. How's the security status? The Freedom League. Oh, liberalized, or um, radicalized liberals are a definite threat now and growing. Well, listen, guys, thank you for watching Democracy 3. We're going to put a cut in here and take a break so I can have a drink of water. And uh, see you guys next time.